Let's talk about soft jaws, and I'm not just talking about your weird cousins from up country. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. We're gonna be talking today about some of the most versatile fixturing you can have in your shop. But before we do, make sure you like and subscribe below if you wanna see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we're gonna to be talking about soft jaws. Um, through a little movie magic, this is actually going to be a combination of a shop talk video where we went into the Practical Machinist threads, where there were some great questions about soft jaws, and we're going to go and look at some of the soft jaw fixturing we have in my shop in use. Um, for those of you who don't know soft jaws, basically when you look at a vise and you have a pair of jaws in your vise, soft jaws are kind of what they say on the tin, um, typically made of aluminum. I've seen them made out of brass, though I'm not sure why. They're a set of jaws that you can freely cut into when you are making a part. The other thing you can do with them is make the exterior of your part into them so you can hold oddly shaped or round parts in a vise. The other big advantage of soft jaws is being able to hold multiple parts in a vise. We're gonna get into all this in the video ahead, but if you have not seen these before, I highly, highly recommend watching this video because you are gonna learn some incredible stuff. Um, and I highly recommend checking out the thread on this as well. If you have not gone to the Practical Machinist forums, guys, I highly recommend you go check them out. Um, this is just a sampling of some of the incredible information that is on there. I go on there all the time. Really, really recommend you guys do as well. Let's take a look. So for those of you who don't know, um, just to have a little background to this conversation, I know some of you guys may not have used them before. Um, some of you guys may just be getting into the trade and you know, are not familiar with all the different kinds of work holding that go into uh, running a CNC machine. But one of the main options you can use for a lot of jobs are soft jaws. What a soft jaw is, is it is typically a piece of aluminum that is drilled just like your typical jaws. So this is a soft jaw, let me grab one here. This is a regular hard jaw. So this one, those are the counter bores and screw holes for your vices. They tend to be fairly standard. Um, mine are set up for my Kurt vices, but they also fit on my double vices. I think they're G5s. But what soft jaws do is they allow you to cut them. This is important because if you have a part, for instance, that fits in something like this, you can meld both ends of the profile at once, or if I can grab another one here, you can make jaws like this that can hold something round, or you can uh, have an, a profile in there. So you do, you know, op one of a program in hard jaws, you mill the profile, and then you flip it into soft jaws to hold that, you know, profile, whatever it may be, to deck it off. Very, very handy. Um, we typically try to make a bunch of these all at once. You usually use two by two 6061 aluminum in our shop to make them. Um, I've seen guys talk about using like 7075 and some other harder grades of aluminum because it can help a little bit. But they're a very, very handy tool, especially for short production stuff because they give you a lot of flexibility. Um, you know, you can very quickly make jaws to do a job and get it out as opposed to building, you know, elaborate fixturing. We use them a lot. Uh, but it was interesting because a guy came on and had a question, some questions about soft jaws. So her, his first question was, when you're making soft jaws and you're cutting the profile, do you cut it on size or a little bit over? The responses here were all pretty much the same and I agree with them. Typically when you're making soft jaws, you wanna get as close to the profile size as possible that still allows the part in. Um, the last thing you wanna do guys is make them undersized because if you make, let's say we're doing a round part like this and I make this round jaw undersized, when I put that in, the points of contact are actually gonna be out here because the part's not gonna sit completely flush into the part or into the jaw. That means it's gonna be very difficult to have repeatability. Um, it's gonna be very bad clamping force. You wanna make sure that you're getting it as close to that actual profile as possible in order to have as much contact with that face as possible. If you go oversized too much, so let's say we have a round part that sits in there and it's actually smaller, the part is smaller than the jaws by a lot. Instead of having a good, you know, maybe one, two, three points of clamping, you're basically gonna have one point of clamping per side. Um, this is bad because that point of clamping may be, you know, 50 thou, 30 thou, depending on the radius of the part. So making sure you get it as close as possible to that is gonna be good. Um, 
Typically what I do, and I saw other guys suggest this as well, especially when you're doing a profile of a part that you know may not be straight or you know just a normal round, is I take that part and in Mastercam, I'll put it right on a picture, a picture, a drawing of the jaws, and I'll do a contour. And in Mastercam, and I know in a lot of other cam systems, I'm most familiar with Mastercam, you can leave negative sock. So instead of leaving material on the walls, you can set your negative sock to a thou, two thou, five thou. You know, you, you gotta kinda play with it a little bit, see what's gonna work in your machine and you know how accurate and repeatable your machine is. But using negative stock is good because then you can basically just keep bumping it out. You know, you don't wanna recut jaws four or five times because that's a waste of time. But it's a very easy way to make sure you have clearance in there. The other thing you wanna do is make sure you have clearance in your corners. I didn't look in advance to see if I have any square parts, but if you go and you make a pocket in this for a square part, you don't want the corners of your part trying to force into the corners of the jaw. Um, this is basically because obviously if you're using a round end mill, because they're all round, there's gonna be a radius of the part. So what you do is you do Mickey Mouse ears or overcut corner relief into the corners of that profile to make sure that you have a good flat face on the back that's holding it and you have clearance for those corners. Um, I know some versions of Fusion, I don't know if Fusion has it now, I think they do. I know Mastercam has it where you can just go and put corner relief in with a couple of clicks. So make sure you do that, it's very helpful. The next question was, do you cut relief on the bottom of your profile? So what this guy's asking is, if I have a profile like this and I'm holding a part in there, do you cut relief underneath? So do you undercut relief into there? He was asking because he thought it would be good in order to make sure chips don't build in, build up in the bottom of this profile. My answer and the general consensus there was, not unless you have to. You want as much of this profile to be available for holding the actual part as possible. Undercutting it can help, but typically what it's gonna do is just allow more room for that part to move. Because if you're holding a part at the top and not down here, that part may be able to kick. You wanna have as much flat profile as possible along the walls of that part. And typically guys, if you undercut it to try to get, you know, keep chips from building up, it actually has the opposite effect. It gives a spot for the parts, or for the chips to build up. I like to have a nice square corner on the bottom because then when you blow it out, there's no place for the chips to hide and you should be blowing out soft jaws every single time. Um, the exception to this is if the part has a flange. So if the part you know, goes up and then has a flat, you can cut your jaws away so that can sit underneath and have clearance. But you don't really wanna do that unless you have to. The third question was, can you do more than two items at a time in soft jaws or what is best practice for that? In trade schools, guys, I saw a lot of guys saying this. I don't remember them saying this to me, but I guess they've said it to a lot of people. Are you supposed to run more than two parts in a vice? Trade school says no, because they want you to hold two parts and then the, the jaws are gonna be able to center on those two parts. I guess the thinking is if you have three parts or more, you may be clamped on two parts out here and you miss the two in the middle. They're not clamped as strong and you're gonna kick them. Personally, and a lot of guys on there said the same thing, I've run four parts in these vices, I've in soft jaws. I've run two to three a lot. Um, it depends on what you're doing. You know, soft jaws aren't great for heavy material removal because you know at the end of the day it's just aluminum, it may deform. Um, you shouldn't really be doing anything huge in terms of material removal in soft jaws anyway. So for me, I've always had it work out fine. But then again, I'm not trying to push soft jaws too hard. Um, you know, you can always try it, and if you get to the point where you're kicking parts then it's time to build a fixture. So it's something to think about. The fourth question was, do you use serrated end mills, so like a roughing end mill that has a ridge profile on it, to cut your profiles in order to get more grip out of it? Again, my opinion lined up with everybody's there, no. Um, unless you're doing something softer than aluminum, like you know UHMW or some kind of plastic peak, um, rubber, you don't want to do this because the aluminum is just going to deform and mushroom, especially if you're holding an, another aluminum part or a steel part. You're going to mar your part. It's just not very good practice. Um, I didn't see anybody there recommend it, so personally, I agree. That's not generally the best thing to do. A good thing you should do, and this was a tip I thought was excellent in that form, in, in that form post, was you should always mark your jaws with the part that went in there. Because a lot of times, guys, you can put them on the shelf. As you can see, we got lots of them behind me. If it's marked with the info for that part, 
And you know, I always put the X, Y, zero on there. So either the corner I picked up or you can drill and ream a hole for your zero. That allows you to pick that up again back in a vise and use it a second time. We have some jobs that we run solely in soft jaws all the time. We keep them labeled, keep them on the shelf and grab them out the next time. And since the part number is engraved on there with the X and Y zero, it's very, very easy to set up again. I did see guys there say that sometimes they'll put dowels in between their soft jaws. So for instance, let me grab a pair here. They will put a dowel, for instance, in here and in here. So these only move straight, you know, in straight lines. I thought that was a great idea. I've never done it, but I do think that if you are doing something where you need to have those perfectly lined up, it is a very good idea. Um, the last thing I noticed on there that was an interesting conversation was spacing of your soft jaws when you cut them. So obviously guys, you don't want your soft jaws to be right up against each other when you cut them or else you're not gonna be able to clamp. I typically put a 1 8 parallel like this in between my two jaws so that I know I have clamping in there. Um, I saw a lot of guys in there saying they use old credit cards or hotel keys because they are 30 thou. Interesting, um, you know, you wanna have enough room that you can clamp, but not so much room that you're getting rid of the flat below the part. Um, personally, I wanna have as much land on the bottom of that profile as possible for that part to sit flat. So using something very narrow, such as a 1 8 parallel that you know is flat the whole way along is helpful. So there you have it guys. That was a quick crash course on soft jaws. Um, I hope this has been informative. I'd love to hear below in the comments how you guys are using soft jaws in your shops. Um, if you have any tips and tricks for someone who has not used them very frequently before, I'm sure people would love to hear it and I would love to read it as well. Guys, you can never stop learning something new. Um, you know, if you have tips that you can share with me, I would be very happy to see them as well. So please, please comment those below. Thank you very much for watching guys. As always, make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos. You take care.